I have run these canyons for six million years. I have traveled from the Rocky Mountains. Today my presentation is on the Colorado River. The Colorado River is located in southwestern America and runs through seven states. Colorado, New Mexico, Wyoming, Utah, Nevada, California and Arizona. The mouth of the river is in the Gulf of California and the source of the river is in La Poudre Pass in the Rocky Mountains, Colorado. The Colorado River runs through the world famous Grand Canyon. This image shows in detail the Colorado River Basin with its many, many tributaries. And this image shows the Colorado River Basin has been split into two different basins, the upper and the lower basin. This image shows Colorado River Basin in comparison to the United States of America. The river system. The Colorado River is located in southwestern America. The main headwaters of the river are located in the Rocky Mountains region. The Colorado River is in America's top five longest rivers and is 2,334 kilometers long. The river has 15 main tributaries and a basin area of 630,137,000 square kilometers. The basin area is roughly the size of France. The river has many tributaries running into the Colorado River with many other rib rivers running into the tributaries. These images show the Colorado River through its many areas and different landscapes. Use of the river. The entire southwest of America depends on the Colorado River and its tributaries. The numerous states it runs through use the Colorado River for farming, drinking, growing lawns and generating hydroelectric power. Over 30 million people in the southwest use the Colorado River's water for their material sustenance and millions more use the river itself for recreation and spiritual enjoyment. Not only 30 million people depend on the water supply from the Colorado River, but 4 million acres of farmland also relies on the river. In Arizona, 900,000 acres of the land is harvested. Roughly 25% of the state's water is provided by the Colorado River. Cotton, lint, cottonseed, hay, wheat, barley, corn, potatoes, lettuce, onions, cauliflower, broccoli, carrots, miscellaneous vegetables, honeydews, cantaloupes, watermelons, grapefruits, oranges, lemons, tangerines and grapes are all among the crops grown using the water source of the Colorado River. More than 1.4 million acres of irrigated land throughout the Colorado River Basin produce about 15% of the nation's crops, 13% of its livestock and agricultural benefits of more than $1.5 billion a year. The Colorado River Basin also provides aesthetic, recreational and environmental values to the United States as a whole. The basin is a huge area and has spectacular scenic landscapes and geological formations. The basin supports world-class rafting and freshwater fishing industries, industries with the total economic value of fishing, hunting and wildlife viewing calculated at more than $10 billion annually. At the moment, there is not enough water in the Colorado River to meet the basin's current water demands. With a growing population, the future de demand increases and there are future supply reductions due to climate change. There are many natural features in throughout the Colorado River, but today I chose the Horseshoe Bend col in the Colorado River. Horseshoe Bend is a horseshoe shaped meander of the Colorado River located near the Highway 99, about four miles south of the town of Page in Arizona in the Uni United States of America. Before the plateau formed, the Colorado River flowed across the land like any other. The middle course of the river is where there are large meanders such as Horseshoe Bend. This is where the stream has the most energy and water. Like all meanders, the bends in the Colorado formed due to a cycle of erosion and deposition. 
The outside of the bend, where the water flows fastest, is worn away. Then this eroded rock and sediment is deposited by the slower flowing water inside of the bend. The continuous erosion and deposition causes the river to meander and migrate downstream. Unpredictability. The natural feature of the Colorado River. Horseshoe Bend is a horseshoe-shaped meander of the Colorado River located near the Highway 89, about four miles south of the town of Page in Arizona. Before the plateau formed, the Colorado River flowed across the land like any other. The middle course of the river is where there are large meanders such as Horseshoe Bend. This is where the stream has the most energy and water. Like all meanders, the bends in the Colorado formed due to a cycle of erosion and deposition. The outside of the bend, where the water flows fastest, is worn away. Then this eroded rock and sediment is deposited by the slower flowing water inside of the bend. The continuous erosion and deposition causes the re river to meander and migrate downstream. Dramatic meanders and landforms like Horseshoe Bend emerge after the gradual uplift of the Colorado Plateau. Originally, the plateau was at sea level, but today parts of it stand around 2,000 metres above sea level. So the uplift caused the river to carve its path down through the ancient sandstone instead of eroding from side to side. This is because water will always follow the steepest route. Over a span of a 1,000 years, the banks of the river grew even steeper until eventually the river became entrenched at the base of a canyon. The Grand Canyon Escalade Conflict Dominating a 277 mile stretch of the Colorado River in northern Arizona, the Grand Canyon is one of the world's most iconic landscapes, a world heritage site and one of the seven natural wonders of the world. The Grand Canyon amazes and inspires nearly 5 million visitors per year with its grandness and expanse. It is sought after destination for recreation and is considered a sacred landscape to more than 10 Native American tribes who have called the region home for millennia. The canyon represents more than 1.7 billion years of geological majesty and is home to wildlife including bighorn sheep, mountain lion and fish such as the endangered humpback chub. Dozens of creeks, springs and tributaries connect with the Colorado River in the Grand Canyon, including the Little Colorado. There has been a battle through, though, between preservation and accessibility and has been especially heated since February 2012 when the Navajo Nation's president, Ben Shelley, who is no longer president, signed a non-binding agreement with Phoenix development firm Confluence Partners to look into building the Grand Canyon Escalade. The Grand Canyon Escalade is a proposal to build a 2 million square foot industrial scale construction project on the east rim of the canyon that includes a tram to the bottom of the Grand Canyon at the confluence of the Little Colorado River and the Colorado River. If the Escalade project moves forward, 10,000 people per day could access a pair of walkways along the edge of the river in the canyon. An additional construction project near river level would include a restaurant, gift shop and restrooms that would irreversibly scar this national treasure. There are serious concerns about noise, pollution and human waste. The confluence is a sacred site to the Navajo, Hopi, Zuni, Havasupai and other tribes and is one of the most picturesque and unique experiences in all of the Grand Canyon. To protect the Colorado and the canyon, the Secretary must initiate a dialogue focused on the alternatives to the proposed Escalade project, which could provide viable and sustainable economic development opportunities for the Navajo Nation while protecting the Colorado River and national park resources. On this page, I have showed images of the proposed Grand Canyon Escalade. And as you can see in this image, this is the gondola tram that would come down from the top of the Grand Canyon at to river level and down here is the proposed river walks that would follow the river along with an amphitheater restrooms and restaurants the project's manager 
manager's arguments are that the Grand Canyon Escalade is not within the boundaries of the Grand Canyon National Park and also would not discrete any sacred sites, so they believe they are not impacting anything historical or sacred. If the plans go ahead, the Grand Canyon Escalade will consist of an Escalade, a gondola tramway from the Canyon Rim to the location near the Colorado River, a river walk, an educational and sightseeing experience at the bottom of the Grand Canyon, the Discovery Centre, a themed cultural and historic recreation with entertainment, arts, events, education, dining and shopping experience, lease sites for hotels and other services, and exhibit and sale areas for local Navajo craftsmen, artisans and jewellery vendors. But a virtual reality may just save the Grand Canyon. It's an alternative to such massive developments and represents the latest evolution. Virtual reality is an interesting medium for a niche wilderness preservation passion project. A panoramic imagery studio proposes an alternative to the Grand Canyon Escalade project. Digital 3D tours of the park. 360 labs makes 360 degree panoramic video photography and immersive virtual reality video. These videos allow the public all over the world to access incredible 360 degrees of footage of the Grand Canyon and Colorado River. This option allows people who wouldn't get the opportunity to travel to America or the Grand Canyon to experience the vastness in their comfort of their own home. This option doesn't impact the historical site in any way, but still gives the public incredible viewing. So just within the comfort of your own home, you are available to view this incredible footage, which just by the movement of your mouse, you can rotate it to complete 360 degrees of a moving video, which is pretty incredible. At the moment, there is a group against this entire Grand Canyon Escalade and they are showing their views to save the Colorado. Sustainability of the Colorado River. For over a decade, the American West has suffered from an unprecedented drought with an exponential population growth and the temperatures on the rise due to climate change. Water levels in the Colorado River are dropping at a disturbing rate. The biggest threat to the Colorado River is coming from the upstream states, Utah, Colorado, Wyoming and New Mexico are pro proposing to take even more water out of the river. To serve the needs of human population throughout the last decade, the Colorado River has been completely drained dry by the time it reaches the Sea of Cortez in Mexico. Water is taken out of the Colorado River through an astonishing network of dams, reservoirs, and diversions. Over a hundred dams have been built on the Colorado River and more have been planned. They have been built for its tributaries aimed at flood control to create hydroelectricity to so store agricultural water and to generate a steady water supply for people and crops. The water levels of the river's two largest reservoirs, Mead and Powell, have dropped significantly over the last couple of years. As you can see in these images of Lake Mead and Lake Powell, where the water used to be, this line, and now considerably how much it has dropped and the colour in the rock has changed. Although dams and reservoirs provide enormous benefits for human populations, they are also threats to water supplies. 
Over 10% of the flow in the Colorado River evaporates every year in reservoirs along its path. Currently, more water is requested from the river than the river can provide, and thus the river has been drained dry for the last dec decade before it reaches the Sea of Cortez in Mexico. Supply, demand and drought are prominent issues of the Colorado River Basin. The Colorado River is primarily a snow melt driven hydro hydrologic system. Roughly 90% of the river's flow is driven from snow melt in the river's upper basin. However, most of the demand and use is in the lower basin. Increasing need for the water in the Colorado River with reduced flow and the looming threat of climate change have prompted concern about how to manage the wa basin's water in the coming decades. Water temperatures will lead to more evaporation and thus less flow. Climate change will likely decrease the rain and snow that drains into the Colorado River Basin. The Colorado River provides water for over 30 million people, but recently the basin has faced several challenges, including severe drought and increased demand. The seven states bordering the Colorado River sponsored a study in 2006 to begin addressing the issues. The river is tightly managed and controlled and captured and caged by 10 massive dams along its length. It is used, it is its use regulated by a treaty, interstate compacts, state and federal laws, and a host of judicial decisions and decrees. In fact, the Colorado is one of the most intensely managed rivers in the world. Currently, the Colorado Water Plans has four main points which they wish to address. One, prioritise protecting healthy flowing rivers and restoring degraded ones. Increase water efficiency and conservation in cities and towns. Modernise agricultural practices and make it easier for irrigators who now use more than 80% of Colorado's water to share water with urban areas in ways that both maintain valuable ranches and farms and keep rivers healthy. And four, avoid new major trans mountain diversion projects so as not to further harm upper Colorado rivers and the communities that depend upon them. People trying to find answers to the Colorado River drought are going to the extents of ripping up their lawns, 